Good morning everyone, this is the Volvo EX90 twin motor, a 300 kilowatt, 400 something horsepower with a 107 kilowatt hour usable energy battery and today we're going to do a range test with 130 kilometers an hour. This car has 22 inch wheels, 295 in the rear, 265 in the front, gigantic tires this, and this car is extremely similar, well it's almost the same as the Polestar 3 that I tested uh, a week ago. The only difference uh, that the Tesla, the, the Polestar had more power, 380 kilowatt, but still all-wheel drive. But it's even the same software, 1318, so it's exactly the same. Charging here the Tesla Supercharger to 100% and we go right on the highway and drive the 130 GPS and then we'll see how far we can go. Getting 32 kilowatt at 99%. It's a great display here. I'm on my way driving 133 on the speedometer. You can see it here on the head up display or here on the speedometer, like I said. And I have AC off. In this car, you cannot turn off the heat like in the Polestar 3. There's so many differences. But I have my climate on 22 degrees, it's 19 degrees outside. I doubt that it's heating right now. And I already noticed a few things. So you turn on the cruise control the same way and control it as in a Polestar 3. You can again not adjust the distance, but uh, I can turn off the steering assist on and off here with one button. And this looks like resume, but it's not. So I, if, I, if I turn it off by braking and I switch it, nothing happens. <laughs> So how is driving the Volvo EX90 twin motor at 130 on the highway? And it's really nice. The suspension is really, really comfortable. I have it on soft. You can put it into hard as well. This car has the air suspension, so the, you can put the, the, <coughs> the rear up to get easier in the trunk or down, whatever you want. Um, the steering I have in hard. In soft, I find the same as in the Polestar 3 that sometimes I feel the tires so that the tires are in a groove or something and, and then the, the steering is doing something weird so I have it in hard that's better um, noise level is incredible 130 there's nothing <laughs> a tiny bit of wind noise it's quieter than the Polestar 3 um, Cruise control is the same as I said in, in the Polestar 3, there's no distance control. It reacts to a car in front of me pretty early, so the distance that it has is pretty far. Um, no resume. I don't get why this button is here. This is clearly the, 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 the symbol for resume, but it doesn't do it. And that I can switch the steering assist on and off here is awesome. The steering assist is okay it has the same thing as in the Polestar 3 I haven't, haven't driven this on the country road um, so when you do a, a, a lane change so I have tried the lane change assist doesn't work I tried everything so it tells me in the head-up display I can see an arrow pointing to the left that I can use it I put the indicator on not strong just tapping Maybe I have to do tapping uh, strong and not tapping, but nothing happens. And then when I steer myself, it turns off as if, I, if the whole system would be off. Um, and, but when I do a lane change, like now, 
it does the same thing as the Polestar 3 but a bit softer. Every time you did a, a lane change the Polestar 3 was left, right, left. It doesn't matter if you go fast in the other lane or slow. It's just different and it's right, left, right. And here it does it the same way but a bit softer. So it's okay. In the Polestar it was just this is not nice this is uh, I turned off the, the steering assist a lot but in here it's fine I'm at 75% use 25% of the battery can speak and I drove 106 kilometers that a full range of 424 kilometers in the Polestar 3 at this point I had 388 but again it's a more powerful version it has a more powerful motor in the rear even at this range mode that I'm in where only the rear motor is doing something only if I floor it the front motor gets attached and uh, uses power but I have that off and I also found out the lane change assist it's not tapping the indicator you have to press it hard the full way then it does the does the lane change and it does it very very smooth way better than the Polestar 3 I'm at 50% and drove exactly 200 kilometers. Our range also so went down from 424 to 400. And look at my range estimate. 200 kilometers, that's spot on. Awesome. <laughs> Consumption barely changed. It went from 270 to 280 watt hours per kilometer. That's not a gigantic big difference. Um, yeah. Traffic is nice, it's 23 degrees out, I have the AC on on 23 degrees. I turned around, navigated back to the charger. I also want to see if it's preheating the battery. It's 23 degrees still out there. We'll see. You can see it in the consumption where it says electronic and battery care and right now this is on 2% so we'll see if it stays at 2% uh, it's 121 kilometers to go of 150 kilometers of range it says I will arrive with 9% when I plant the route a bit away it said 8% then when I turned around 10% now 9 I want to arrive with a bit at 9% would be perfect because I'm doing a charging test um, since this car is charging the same way as the Polestar 3 so we have a, a difference in char charging those two cars at a hypercharger where it's limited to 500 amp and at a Tesla supercharger where you get over 200 kilowatt so we'll see I'm at 25% and drove 298 kilometers, consumption still 280. Um, looks good, still around 400 kilometers of full range. I have 63 kilometers to go uh, and 90 kilometers of range, but again, this range doesn't change so with one kilometer under 100 kilometers it only changed with five kilometer steps above with 10 um, but it's okay my ac is now 22 by the way in eco so it uses a bit less energy and i looked one percent is for climate for this drive two percent is still for electronics and battery care so i'm guessing it's just for electronics
Do you want to charge for free? Of course you do. And how can you do that with Encharge? Encharge is an app you install on your phone and when you are at the charger, you rate the charger, you tell the charging provider if everything is okay, if there's something not working, is it dirty and stuff like this. And the charging provider is so happy that it gives you via Encharge kilometers and stars and these you can exchange for a charging credit. Check the link in the description and get 20 kilometers for free if you sign up. I arrived with 8%. Temperature is always interesting. Drove 362 kilometers. Google Maps says 364, I think. Yeah, 364. Consumption 280 watt hours per kilometer. Yeah, I'm doing my charging test now and I saw 253 kilowatt. Now at 18% it's 214 kilowatts. I'm guessing at 20% we are the same. I looked at the data that Volvo gave me and on a supercharger you get 30 minutes 10 to 80 percent on a uh, hypercharger 32 minutes so it's two minutes difference that's okay um, I calculated the range and I get to 395 kilometers today in these conditions with this car which is okay I'm really okay with that um, it's a gigantic car I don't know if you can see how big this car is and uh, 400 horsepower or more and the range was pretty okay it's a pretty big battery but it's a gigantic SUV so you have of course high consumption and if you want to compare the result to other cars in the uh, description below there's a Google sheet where I have all the cars I've ever tested on range tests so you can compare and by the way on my third channel behind the battery I'm now doing a vlog so every two to three days there's a video of the stuff I'm doing just filming a bit on the side what's going on behind the scenes if you you want to follow me on Instagram battery life one and if you want to support the channel there's a patreon link in the description below and here on YouTube there's also channel membership but that's it for me thank you much for watching have a good great day and take care bye